I'm Ed Chad. Welcome to Glass Tires Top Shows in Los Angeles. We usually do five. This week we have four. This is Catherine Wagley, by the way. <laughs> but the first show we're going to do is at Loud Hailer, a small gallery in Culver City. It's a group show um, called Meanwhile in Lonesome Valley. And the title comes from this piece by Barbara Rossi that's on the back wall. It's called Double Crossing Lonesome Valley. And it just sucks you in. I didn't know Barbara Rossi's work, well but you know, it's the type of experience that makes you want to learn a lot more. An experience that actually happens quite often at Loud Hailer Gallery. Uh, but this group show as a whole has a lot to offer. Uh, there's a couple of objects by Orion Martin mm -hmm. that I really it's enjoy. Weird, distorted face bust. Absolutely. Yes. It's, it's, uh, it's definitely worth the visit. The next show we'd like to talk about is actually much higher profile. It's Mark Bradford at the Hammer. It's a show called Scorched Earth after a painting he made of that title in 2006, although that painting is not in the show at all. Um, and there's pieces uh, throughout the hammer. There's a big wall work that greets you. There's a video work, uh, and there's also a selection of paintings. Yeah, the video work is a response to Eddie Murphy's kind of offensive, or genuinely offensive, 1983 film Delirious. And it's a Mark Bradford doing stand-up comedy off-camera. I was just into the rhythms and the absurdities and the way it was kind of trying to clear 80s black machismo. It's definitely, a fa it's definitely a fascinating work. I, I, I have to say I related to the paintings more. Uh, and here you have him expanding the informal economies that become the maps of cities, uh, that become constellations or organic shapes. Here all of those same concerns, compositions that remind you of Terry Winters or Jackson Pollock, this time they impact you on kind of a cellular yeah, level. Yeah, they're bodily. Some of the best moments are these up-close moments where a fuchsia looks like flesh and a scab that's been pulled away and the, the black marks look like burn marks but they could be not, you know, not burn marks from a fire, burn marks in an intimate scale. It's like a commercial gallery show in a certain way. All the work is made in 2015. Wall labels say courtesy of Hauser and Worth. This work has never been in the world somewhere else. I think it could have fermented a little more before I saw the museum. I'm, I'm happy to see uh, Mark Bradford have a show in Los Angeles, uh, way overdue. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I, I wish it would have been more of a uh, more of an overview, more of a more of an expansive view of, of Mark's career as a whole. So the next gal uh, gallery show we'd like to recommend is at the Box in downtown uh, Los Angeles. Yes, and that show is called "Let Power Take Female Form," and it's three generations. Eugenia Butler, who was a gallerist um, who had one of the first conceptual art galleries in Los Angeles in the late 60s, early 70s, is her her work and her the work her gallery showed is represented. Eugenia P. Butler, Eugenia Butler's daughter, who was an artist who showed at the gallery and also showed afterward, is represented in a lot of actually really gorgeous drawings. Some of those drawings are really beautiful. Drawings are great. And then Corazon del Sol, who's Eugenia P. Butler's daughter, Eugenia Butler's granddaughter. Um, and she's the one who really put this whole show together. Um, and it's like, I've never felt context so sensually in a formal exhibition context. In a formal exhibition. I've never seen an exhibition be so candid about generations. Yeah. I've, never, I've never seen a father-daughter or a mother-daughter, especially not a grandmother-granddaughter association. That was a very strange, very fresh take yeah. on a gallery show, and there's a liveliness to it, and there is a there's an earthiness to it that, that really wants you to engage with the stuff, no matter how crazy it is. Yeah. Um, much less crazy is our first show that we recommend. But you were just talking about Max. Well, I mean, when I when I saw Evan Goff's show at Diane Rosenstein, it was weird because it was Mad Max without the madness. It's, it's as peaceful as the apocalypse. I, I've never seen the apocalypse so peaceful in my life. Yeah. Beautiful, sort of Edward Bertensky slash Robert Adams devastating scenes of quarries and emptying reservoirs. But at the same time, the artist himself is, is, is sort of registering as sort of an unapologetic wanderer, late 18th century Euro way of looking at looking at the, the burned out environment. Yeah, except that also, I feel like a lot of artists right now are making objects and also pushing out ephemeral experiences. We're trying to 
capture the ephemeral through a video or through these flimsy objects and like Evan's obsessed with it's amazing making the objects speak to the experience. It's true. For thousands of years, people couldn't give a shit about ephemeral experiences. Now we're obsessed with it, and, and it's good to see. It's good to see an artist getting back to, to things that take time, uh, thinking about things at a geological level. It's a fresh take. It's such a. I mean, you can only meditate on a coffee cup for so long. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's a bit of a rant, but but go see the show. I, I do. I do think this is a good show. It's worth it.